Hello and welcome back to Good Dreams. Joining us today for another episode of Dreaming with the Devs is the sole creator of the newly released platformer called Hops. Thank you for joining us and feel free to tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, yeah, and thanks for having me. It's uh, really awesome to be able to do something like this and speak to you. Of course, we're glad to have you. Um, but yeah, my name is Brian Kataya, um, and uh, I go by just that last name on Twitch and whatnot, and on the PlayStation and Dreams, I'm everything's okay. I guess everything's underscore okay. <laughs> someone, someone snagged it, so. Oh, I know what yeah. that feels like. Yeah, I'm but... an underscore person. Hey, at least you don't have any numbers, right? I mean, it could be worse. That's true, yeah. <laughs> it could be everything's okay, 69 or something. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, let's talk about Hops. This seems to be yeah. your first creation on Dreams, is that correct? Yes, it is, yeah. Nice. I, uh, I pretty much, uh, as soon as I got Dreams, which was the day it was officially released, um, I got to work on this and, and pretty much just thought to myself, you know what, if I'm going to make something, I'm just going to make something big. And I just kind of <laughs> worked towards that the whole time. I didn't, I didn't really do a whole lot of uh, smaller side projects before that. I just got straight to it. So, Yeah, that's pretty impressive. I mean, most people usually have at least a few mini games they launch prior to the more ambitious project, but... I noticed you. this is your first thing, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it leads to certain interesting things, like as you go through the level, certain things get a little better <laughs> because I was kind of uh, learning as I yeah. went. That's usually but, how the development process goes for most things in life. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what so inspired by the time I was you? done, oh. Or, uh, inspired. Yeah, like the theme of rabbits and farming, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was actually a lot of just randomly creating things, and it, it sort of just, like, like Hops itself, uh, that was just me. I went into the puppet, uh, I went into a puppet and just started sculpting it, and it accidentally started looking like a rabbit face, and I was like, eh, let's just let's just go with that. And once I had him, uh, like like you'll see, he's got like a little schoolboy uniform on. Mm -hmm. So there, it was there wasn't really a whole lot of thought put into <laughs> designing Hops himself. Um, but once I had him, I just kind of kept going with that. So um, like the farmer that's in the game, uh, that was just the bust that I created in the in the bust uh, master class tutorial. Okay. Uh, I made him, and I was like, "Well, I got your head, so I'm just gonna throw you on a body, and I guess you're a farmer now." And nice. That's just kind of how that went. Yeah, a nice little natural progression, nothing forced. Just yeah, I made it. a lot of veggies and stuff, so it was like, "Well, I'm already kind of on this path, so let's just stick with it." <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so, how long has it been in development? You mentioned you got it, got started when the game officially released. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that. I. It, it seems now I realize it seems like it was pretty easy to just get into the early access. Mm -hmm. But I. I didn't even think about it, and I knew <laughs> I wanted to play. I was. I was real excited about Dreams, so I should have gotten in the early access. I should have just done it. But yeah. Um, I, I did. I didn't even think about it. So the the day it released, I bought it, and I was like, wait, how are there all these things already on Dreams? But. <laughs> So I've been pretty much playing it since uh, it officially came out, and I got about, I think right now I have 280 hours. Of nice. That's a, that's a pretty good development time for Hops. Has most of it been spent towards the Hops development, you yeah, think? Or is a lot of it pretty tutorials? Much, and... Well, I mean, yeah. Like a, there's the I did all the tutorials, and I think for anyone starting to make stuff, I actually am pretty impressed by the tutorial system. It was very helpful, like more helpful than I would have thought. Yeah. Because um, I mean, like you know, playing some of the old Little Big Planet, like some of those tutorials didn't always help quite as much as I think the dream. I think they learned a lot about teaching people how to play their games. That's good. Um, yeah. So I, I recommend those very highly. And yeah, I did. I did all those. And obviously, you know. I've, there's been some amount of playing games, you know, doing, going through Art's Dream and uh, 
just playing around and, and dream surfing. So I, I guess I couldn't really say exactly what percentage of it was creation. I kind of wish they would break that down a little more, honestly. It would be nice to have more statistics, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, but we need to see how much time have you spent doing each thing because they have the, you know, the thing that kind of tells you uh, uh, sort of what you've been doing recently, but nothing concrete. Yeah, more more data is always a good thing if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. So, what has been the toughest development challenge for you so far? Ooh, um, kind of something we were we were discussing before we even uh, started the interview here. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the toughest things about dreams is just the promotion of your games. Yeah. Um, I think it, it you know you can't underestimate like that aspect of it because you know you want to be able to just make something and just put it out there and have it succeed but um, there's definitely an amount of work in that that for me is really tough like going out there and just you know speaking to streamers and saying hey I, I make a game you know, you want to play like it's <laughs> yeah, you, it's you so tough am, for me. but do you want to talk to me <laughs> i i feel like such a jerk when i go into <laughs> a, 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 a streamer's room and like i feel like i'm making their room about me or, or it's it's tough yeah so i think there's that but just, as far as like making it um more specifically there's just been little like the logic challenges are the biggest are, are the parts that get the hardest mm-hmm. um and sometimes like there's a race in in scene two of the game that making the logic for that work that was just probably two days straight of just just tinkering with logic and trying things out and testing it and breaking yeah. things and refixing <laughs> them is um, that the tortoise race yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's my favorite, actually. <laughs> yeah, I the, well, imagine. I'm glad because there was a lot of work went into the yeah to making that happen. I imagine, right? Because you got to get the tortoise to follow the correct path without like falling off or whatever. And yeah, I mean that that part wasn't too bad because I just used a, a possession recorder for him and just did a, a race. Like he's he's technically a puppet, so um, okay. I was able to just make him. You know, I was able to just use the controller run them through it and then speed it up a little to <laughs> get it to the exact right uh, timing that I wanted him to, to go. Mm-hmm. But then once he does finish the race, you know, I need him to, you know, there's actually two of him and I need them to switch positions and move hops into position when the race starts. And all of that was just a, a monster project. Very interesting. Yeah, this is all behind the scenes stuff. The player never gets to experience. They just think it's magic and it just works. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what's so fun about like when you do create stuff in dreams. It I feel like it makes playing other people's dreams so much better because then when you're going through someone else's dream, you're looking around and you're going, "Oh, how did they do?" You know, and you're you're you're, all, you're trying to figure out how they did certain things, or it's almost like when you watch a magic act and yeah. you figure out the trick. Like when you know what they've done, you're like, ah, oh, uh huh, uh huh, uh-huh. yeah. Get that, a deeper that just level of adds to it, yeah, 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 for sure. I that's one of my favorite ways to learn, especially in Lubic Planet. Back in the day, uh, just reverse engineering, uh, engineering other people's tech, and just seeing how to use the logic or how did they animate stuff, and it's, yeah. you learn something new because everybody has a slightly different way to do things. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm sure like, I, I, I would I'm sure I would be embarrassed if people really looked into the way I did certain things because <laughs> you know when you're just making it up as you go you're just trying to you know you see a problem and you're like how can I fix this mm-hmm. and I'm I'm certain that there are just a million way better ways to have done a lot of the things I did <laughs> if I actually knew about development like like programming and stuff mm-hmm. i'm sure i would have done things a lot different in a lot of places <laughs> hey, that's half the fun though is learning as you go and why dreams is so cool because you can actually learn and not just yeah it's almost like 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 doing the logic it's almost like playing a puzzle game yeah exactly that's why i love logic so much it really is like each individual problem is a like you said a puzzle you have to solve and it feels so good once you actually figure it out and it works without breaking. Oh, yes. Yes, it does. 
I loved how you brought up the challenges of uh, publishing and getting your game out there for people to actually notice and want to play because it's it's an aspect of content creation and game development that a lot of people don't notice because if you don't notice if you don't get to play the game it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle and just disappears from the the mindset mm -hmm. of the public so do you are you happy with the level of i guess i don't know up, uploading abilities and promotion abilities that dreams comes with or would you like a better system to search and find games because i don't know if it's as good as it could be right now to find good quality content and dreams yeah it, it's tough because i go between like you know on one hand Sometimes you'll you'll be in a, a streamer's room and and someone will be showing them a game, and you're like, this is amazing, and then you go to add it to your play later and you look at the the screen and it's like, oh, this has 17 likes, and you're like, how is it possible that this isn't more well known? Like something that is clearly so well done. Yeah. And you you look at that and you want there to be a, but I'm just. I guess I don't really know what the better way would be, you know, like it, it, it kind of feels like if you don't get, you know, like an MM pick or, yeah. or just happen to get lucky that, uh, the algorithm decides to show you to enough people that it's, it's, it can be tough. Yeah. Absolutely. Speaking of the algorithm, I don't know if I screwed, screwed myself with what I did with hops because. I, in my mind, when I was developing Hops, I kind of thought, "Oh, this is, this is neat that you can upload your progress." And you know, like in my mind, I was like, "Oh, it's, it's neat. Like people can see like what you're doing and how you're coming along, and mm -hmm. and and sort of follow your progress." Uh, and I don't think it actually works well that way. I don't know if I made them because because it technically says it was released in April, you know. Yeah, that's a huge um, potential issue because it might not treat it as like a brand new release and like give you that yeah. extra extra. Yeah, I don't know points. if the algorithm thinks it's bad because they're like, oh, this this thing's been out since April and it's only got got fifty likes and this doesn't, must not be very good. So I don't know if I made a mistake by doing it that way. I'm not gonna do it that way anymore. I'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's i mean that's such a creator's dilemma it's like oh do i do i do i take it down do i republish it do i try to do something different or yeah but uh that's honestly one of the big reasons uh that made me want to create this youtube channel is be sort of a better media outlet for dreams as a whole because i saw as you have pointed out so many great creations and developers get lost in the shuffle and are never recognized despite other less than high quality stuff becoming on the front page of dreams and i thought there's gotta be there's gotta be a better way to do this and if we don't yeah. want to have the algorithm decide everything then the best way is just to have content uh curators like mm picks and streamers and youtubers just manually picking out the good stuff and trying to showcase it for their audience well, we we dreamers love the curators. <laughs> there are <laughs> there are <our> friends. <laughs> and I mean, it's a it's a nice relationship. You guys make the content, and we we showcase it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Sym it works. Symbiosis, out. right? But uh, yeah, I would love my hope and dreams is that uh, dreams does get a larger audience soon in order to get make it easier for developers to become noticed because I think. I think Dreams has the potential to become almost a viral sensation like uh, Fall Guys or Rocket League or Fortnite because the ability to create some really fun and wacky ideas is so uh, open to the user and it allows anybody to become this awesome content creator. So if we, can, if we can just get this into more hands, I think it could be really big. It just hasn't sparked in the public video game community yet and i really hope it does you mentioned you like to see it go to playstation plus and i think that's a fantastic idea i, I think i think that'd be wonderful because i got it even just my friends that uh, you know i've been sharing trailers of you know and, and videos of what i was working on with hops like on my facebook and stuff and just showing friends and and it's like ah you can't even 
like what do I expect all my friends to go out and buy a game just so they can try my try hops out like, so it's yeah. like eh, well if if it were if it were free to play or something I could actually get get even just friends to go check it out That'd absolutely be nice. yeah I think either go on plus for a month and get a nose that way or I'm thinking maybe go free to play but obviously the question about how does media molecule monetize their own game like we want them to be paid for fantastic creation they've given us yeah. so i think a potential way to solve that is give it free to play to everyone so you can play all the levels but if you want to create something and then publish it have that locked behind a paywall so like spend yeah spend 10 20 to unlock publishing capabilities that way yeah, i think so. I think some kind of free to play model, like further than what, because they already have, don't they already have like some kind of demo that just has a small selection of, of Correct. games? Yeah. It's yeah. A small slice of what the community has made, but. It's, and are it's they not keeping that updated? No, they're not. That's the annoying part. See, yeah. yeah exactly. If they would, if they would keep that updated to, to let people know, like, hey, people are still creating cool stuff. Like, here's the newest neat dreams. Even like yeah. just, you know. It's a weird uh, once a month. I'll give them give them a couple more things. I think that would be go a long way towards helping out. It's a very odd demo. Like I guess they wanted to curate the content, but I think it'd be better if people could just play like the first twenty levels. If you're going to do a demo, just like let them pay play whatever they want for like yeah. a limit, and then then you can start charging if you want. You know that's a good point. Like the world the World of Warcraft model of like. You know, and like all those MMOs, these like World of Warcraft used to not have any free to play, yeah. but now they're they're like, okay, well, we want to get more people playing level twenty, and like, yeah. it's a really easy way. You know, you're not going to be, you're either going to hate it or you're not going to be satisfied, and you're exactly. going to want more. Yeah, so that would be a good idea as well. Yeah, Dreams is very the the, the this divisive game because. If you want like a full polished experience, like your AAA title, thirty-hour campaign, you're not going to like Dreams because Dreams is right. more about like small, bite-sized, half-hour experiences and playing like wacky concepts. You never, never would have seen a full developer spend fifty million, hundred million dollars <laughs> trying to make. Uh, yeah. So. Well, I also wonder if some of you know with the demo where they they have curated like what they consider to be like here's the best of the best. Take this, see how good it. That can almost be daunting too, because like someone who's looking at that is like, well, yeah, that's great, but I'm not going to be able to make that, so why would I get into this? You know, some of the exactly some of the even just some of the garbage like meme stuff, yeah. you know, that is just quick rapid fire, go in and just see some weird stuff. <laughs> some of that can be like almost more inviting than the the really polished stuff, maybe. Yeah, that's a fantastic point. Yeah, like if we compare it to movies, like if you only show people like Citizens Kane and like Christopher Nolan films <laughs> to like a person who's never even shot a iPhone uh, home video, they're going to be like, there's no way I can compete with this. this is, I'm not even going to try. Yeah. So, but if you like show them like some fun, fun little cat videos off of YouTube, they might be opening. It's like, oh, <laughs> I can I can make a cat video. I can do this. I could become part of the community. <laughs> yeah, give, give someone a Wario dying and they might say, oh, I, I could beat that. Let me try this. <laughs> yeah, that's a fantastic idea I never thought of. So hopefully, hopefully Media Molecule's listening and does something to get a little bigger audience for Dreams because I think, as we said, the potential is there. It just hasn't quite hit its stride yet. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, Hops is pretty much finished in development, from what it sounds like. Do you have any future <laughs> plans to update it further, or are you moving on to other projects? I did. So right now, I'm just in that phase where, uh, when I see bugs, I'm still fixing those. <laughs> um, I, I'm the kind of person that if if I find out about a bug in Hops like a year down the line, I'm probably gonna go fix it just because it it bothers me. <laughs> just knowing that I fixed one today, <laughs> but yeah. uh, um, as far as further major development of hops, I'm probably going to move that into a, a sequel. I had definitely initially planned on, oh, I'm going to release level one and then I'll work on level two and release level two and three, whatever. Uh -huh. And I've realized that the way people play dreams, uh, it's 
it's going to be better to just have this be standalone. So I took out all references to future levels and the stats page yeah. and stuff. And, and now it's just hops is done. And in the future, if there's more hops, it'll be hops too. But it, yeah. it'll basically be a level two. You know, it's, it's going to... From what I know of what I'm going to do with it already, it, it it's basically going to feel like level two. It's going to start yeah. off where you were. Um, you might gain new abilities or whatever, but it, it's gonna it's gonna be more of the the same feel, basically. Yeah, I think that's a smart decision because it's in its current form, it's so hard to know when dreams are updated with new content. You don't know if it was yeah. just a bug fix or is there like a whole new <laughs> chapter to the game you didn't haven't played. Oh, I feel so bad for anyone following me on dreams because like when I, you know update things I, I i upload and then i realize oh wait i should have moved that text slightly to the left actually so <laughs> let me re-upload everything all over again yeah like i can only imagine what people's feeds look like when they're <laughs> following me yeah so i think yeah re- re-releasing as a new title for each chapter is a smart way to go especially because you can also try new things with the algorithm and see what what works what gets you the most views <laughs> yeah as far as other projects goes, right now I am in the last couple days I decided, you know what, let me let me work on something different than hops. Um, something that in my mind I'm thinking might be a smaller project, but who knows what will happen with it. But um, I'm making like a, a top down shooter that is so heavily influenced by Ikaruga that you might as well just treat it like a, a fan version of it but no oh, nice <laughs> um i don't know if you, do you know ikaruga i've heard of it i haven't played it myself god ikaruga was one of the best shooters that's it was made by treasure and it's like the best shooter you've ever seen and it has this amazing gimmick where everything is either white or black shooting white bullets or black bullets mm-hmm. you can switch between the two and, you know, if, if you're shooting white bullets, it'll do more damage to black enemies. Um, if, if you are a white ship and you get hit by white bullets, you'll soak them up. And basically they made this shooter that you can play it and just try and stay alive like, you know, any old shooter and enjoy it. But if you want to get into the real nitty gritty of it and try and, you know, get high scores on it, then you have to like start memorizing every little area, you know, um, and all the patterns in order to do it right. And so that's kind of what I'm I'm taking that concept, except now I'm giving it three colors. <laughs> we had two, now we're gonna have three. And nice. uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it work or not. Maybe there's a reason they only had two because <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's a dumb idea. But if it starts working out, uh, then that's that's. Uh, what I got coming up next, hopefully. That's that's actually pretty cool. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing that come to fruitation if it were. Uh, so Hops, Hops was a single developer project. Do you yes. want to keep doing that in the future, or are you interested in collaborating with others? I do. I'd love to say that I'd be interested like in collaborating because there are so many amazing creators on Dreams. But just what I know about myself, I'm such a control freak that like, <laughs> I, for everyone else's sake, it's best that I don't because I, I, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, like uh, I, I, I just, I just I have trouble with it. So <laughs> I, I've always just worked on things, you know, even like uh, when I've made music in the past and whatnot, I, I just... I feel like it's better if I just do it myself so that I don't ruin anyone's day. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, I can definitely relate to that. Uh, I did notice you did have a sort of a musical career uh, in your past. Is that something that you think helped influence your uh, game development? Because you have a really rocking soundtrack. It's probably my favorite part of Hops. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I mean, I've I've always done music. I've been doing music since I was a, a kid, um, and you know, not, not getting anywhere with it. But you know, you do it you you do it anyways. And, That's art. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I put it on. I put stuff up on Spotify, and every now and then you get someone to listen to it. And uh, 
recently I've been going to open mics trying to promote that. It's my whole life now is just trying to promote things that no one will actually <laughs> that no one will actually partake in. Uh, so no. what made you want to try game, game development? Is it just a fun hobby? Do you ever want to try or take it professionally? Or no, oh, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I really hadn't thought about that. Like as far as even the possibility of it being a career, I know it's a hard industry. It's extremely like, hard. It, it sounds like one of those industries that you're like, oh, this sounds like a dream job, but and then once not. you're actually doing it, it's it's like a sweat job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like um, it's been my dream to be a game developer pretty much my whole life but uh it's really not as glamorous as it sounds like you're pretty much if you're in a triple a development studio you're working like 80 hours a week and you're gonna oh, get yeah. burned out and you also on the flip side you got indie developers which you have more creative control less strict hours but again it's that getting your project out there in the eyes you're either going to succeed and become a smash hit like angry birds or you're going to become a nobody and like five people are going to play your game after yep, two years of right. development. You're right back to <laughs> all the promotion. Yeah, promotion, promotion. I need to just promotion. make a... I, you know what I should do is I just make a dream. It's a game. It's an RPG about promoting a dream. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and you have, to go, you have to go in the streamer's rooms and, and, <laughs> and get them to play your game. And <laughs> yep. Dreams, the game. <laughs> yep. The newest dream from Dreams. Yep. Have any, have even less plays than the actual dreams, <laughs> yeah. but no, I've always I've always uh, enjoyed the I- the idea of making games. When I was a kid, I used to you know uh, date myself, but like I used to draw like two D Mario, you know Super Mario World uh, levels uh, just on paper, and just just I've been fake developing games my whole life, uh, so. I think that's what draws, you know, Media Molecules projects to me is that it is like, before we had Super Mario Maker, they, we had Little Big Planet, and it was like, just so so cool to be able to take all those ideas that you've always wanted to make uh, into a game and and actually succeed with it, and be able to make something real. Nice. Yeah, that pretty much segues perfectly into my next question. Uh, obviously, the time and effort to make these three-dimensional games is so immense do you think it's worth it the release for free on dreams and what is it just to being able to create something from nothing that strives you to do it or is there something else yeah i think it's i think it's worth it like all art you're always you're always stuck between that like making it for yourself and and that you know greedy inside desire for people to actually you know consume what you've created Mm -hmm. um i i think it's like anything that you can make when you make music you write you're writing a novel or anything it's like you're always going to get that sense of satisfaction from creating something that you love so i think it's I would say it's it's definitely worth it if if no one ever played hops like well I got to play hops and it and I enjoyed it so I think there's something to say for that um, no matter what yeah nice I, I, mean, I got I got little big planet levels that nobody ever played but I still have memories of them so yeah as do uh, I <laughs> worth it <laughs> yeah I think so too. If you could have one thing you could add to Dreamstyle, sort of like a wish list update, what would you like to see added to the game in order to make it a little better? Ooh. It's tough because I think there's there's I, I could give you a couple just little things like oh I wish this gadget could do this or or, or that, but um, aside from what they could add or improve to the game overall. I think it's a pretty complete tool set, you know, it's 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 really just that that, you know, un, un unfixable problem of what what can you do to help people's dreams be seen and mm-hmm. we've already covered that, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's it's such a good I, I was honestly like impressed by the scope of what they 
allow you to do in the first place. Yeah. Like uh, when they announced it and they, they had a trailer and I was like, oh, you, you can make any kind of game, you know, like little big planet was, it made sense. Oh, here's, mm-hmm. you can make side scrolling platformers, you know? Um, and then in a sequel, we'll let you make races or whatever. But like when they announced this and said, you're going to be able to make literally any kind of video game you want to make. I was skeptical. Skip- you know, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Sure you will. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, they- <laughs> Um, and then once I got in it and realized, oh my God, it's true, you can, um, I was pretty ecstatic. So I, I don't know what they could add to this. I mean, they, I, I know people ask for multiplayer a lot, and I, I, I feel like they're considering it or working on it, aren't they? Yeah, they're working on it. It's something that was supposed to get updated a very long time ago, but... I'm sure it's a big update for them, and a lot of people are hoping it'll come out for the PlayStation 5's release, which yeah. seems to make sense to me. Another interesting thing uh, Media Molecule has said they're looking into is the potential to allow creators to monetize their creations by either selling it for sale as a standalone release on the PlayStation Store, or yeah. adding some sort of tipping or pay, pay to play <laughs> your level inside of Dreams. How do you what do you think about that? Do you think that's a good idea or I like the idea just from a selfish perspective of I would love for my friends who don't even have, you know, PS4s or whatever to potentially be able to you know, spend a couple bucks and and play hops, you know, I I would love that, but mm-hmm. um I'm definitely like it's one of those things that I'm curious how they would pull it off just because everything in like everything in dreams is so for the most part people are making things that include lots of other people's work very true um so how does that work you know is the big question you know if someone if someone makes some a remix of something and uh just replaces all the characters with wario's do they get to sell that now and (laughs) and somehow i mean you know and i guess there's the question of would anyone buy yeah. Wario hops, uh, but <laughs> but if they do, do I get anything out of Wario hops? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's probably a lawyer's nightmare trying to figure out who is who's creation rights, who gets a chunk pie, a piece of the pie. Are we cutting it solely for the creator? Does Media Molecule get a cut? Does Sony get a cut? Does every person right. who did a single asset get a cut? <laughs> like a, a really good example is technically if you look at the the creators page of hops there's uh i think like 10 or something other names on there mm-hmm. with mine and that's because when i first started uh i think like the first song that i did um i just you know was was searching for instruments and and sometimes you find like an instrument uh th- that i would use that technically is someone adjusting like some settings on an instrument you know and then re-uploading it so i realized after that oh i'm just gonna pick the media molecular ones but that's that's a perfect example of how complicated that can be like i i i say that i made 100 percent of hops just because that's easier than saying i made (laughs) 99.99 percent of hops except for someone tweaked this instrument (laughs) but like how does that work from the perspective of monetizing things though yeah, it's a nightmare of a question. And I'm sure Sony probably doesn't even want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. So who knows if that will actually happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah, for sure. So one final question. Uh, what kind of advice do you have for anyone watching who may be inspired to create something like you, like someone who's never made anything before but always had the dream to make a video game? What kind of advice would you give to that person who's just starting out and might feel a little overwhelmed by the concept of making a three-dimensional game inside of dreams um i would say first off do make it through that all the tutorials um because i know like i i felt it uh when i had when my wife went through the tutorials she felt it even something as simple as the just controlling the camera when you're creating has a learning curve in this game like it's definitely there but um the more you do it every little bit of it uh will get easier and i think i think creating in dreams it's just all about iteration 
you don't have to make something amazing right away because you can always come back to it later when you've learned more techniques and make it better. You know, we've all like taken our first sculpture and gone back to it later and been like, oh, why did I do that this way? Let me let me do this a different way or, or come back to logic that we made a big mess of and realized, oh, I can literally just put a selector here and it fixes everything. You know, you're, you're going to learn more and more the more you create and um, it's it's steep. It's a steep learning curve, but if you can get get past even just the tutorials, I think you'll have the tools to to make something. Nice. And don't worry about making something like huge and epic and just just make a meme thing. Have fun. <laughs> like that's the the most important thing, honestly. Yeah, and having fun is that's what video games are all about, right? Yeah, one of the first things that my wife and I saw in dreams, we when we were dream surfing that first night, we found some some ridiculous um, audio visual thing that you know you could tell by the the voice acting that it was just made by a bunch of kids just having fun and yeah. you know like they they're just using puppet controller uh, the puppet uh the possession uh, whatever it's called. You know what I'm getting at. I get you. Yeah, the possession thing. And whenever they're talking, they're just flipping their controller around to make the heads bob <laughs> around. Like, And it was nothing that they spent too much time on. Like, they're just like, all the characters were just puppets with, you know, this one has a hat on or this one <laughs> has has eyes. And it was just so much fun to watch. It was just kids, like, making something cool. So, you know... Don't worry about if you can make something amazing because whatever you are going to make, it, it's still going to be cool to you. Yeah, I think as long as you can get one person to smile, even if it's just yourself from creating something out of nothing, I think it's all worth it. At the I end think of so it. too. Nice. Uh, so once again, thank you so much for having us. This is a whole lot of fun. Uh, yeah, you like... thank, thank you for doing this. It's it's I, I really appreciate you taking the time to ask me questions <laughs> of course I'm always happy to have you and we're excited to see what you come up with in the future whether it's hops 2 or your top down shooter or something else so yeah well, I appreciate it of course we'll have links in the comments below for hopefully others to try out hops and and while we showed a lot of gameplay we actually only showed about half of the game so we don't spoil too much so be sure to check it out yourself and see the other half of hops but that wraps up another episode of Dreaming with the Devs. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more developer interviews, be sure to leave a comment below on which dream developer you would like us to interview next. In the meantime though, as always, sweet dreams. <laughs>